Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today in Qadabiyah Palace. During the meeting, they affirmed the importance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's Royal Directive in promoting tolerance and the establishment of security and stability stressing that the people of Bahrain support His Majesty's directions towards the prosperity of the country, noting that the citizens will remain the basis of development and the essence of all developmental and economic movements. They asserted that the government has managed to deal with the requirements of the current phase and its financial challenges regionally and internationally, and succeeded in ensuing the suitability of development in different circumstances through its various programmes. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Gedebia Palace. Secretary General Dr Yasser Al Nasser issued the following statement. His Royal Highness praised the Royal Directive of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to reinstate nationality to 551 people stripped of their citizenship, which aims to achieve the national security and consolidation and takes into account the seriousness of the sentence, the circumstances of the commission of the crime and the seriousness of the crime itself. His Royal Highness praised the government's direction to strengthen capabilities for the effective implementation of alternative punishments, which reflects His Majesty the King's keenness to provide the requirements for justice and the preservation of the right of society. He instructed the ministries, in coordination with the Ministry of the Interior, the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, to develop programmes which expand the scope of the implementation of alternative penalties in a way that commensurates with the situation of those who were convicted and to ensure the integration into the judiciary. The Cabinet condemned the terrorist act which targeted the security centre in the north of the capital Riyadh, Saudi Arabia and affirmed Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia in confronting terrorism and preserving its security and stability. His Royal Highness then called on the international community to take a serious stance against terrorism which affects places of worship, mosques and churches and does not respect the sanctity of religion, blood and humanity. He condemned the terrorist bombings that targeted churches and hotels in Sri Lanka which coincided with Easter and stressed the importance of tolerance and coexistence, expressing sincere condolences to the government and the people of Sri Lanka. His Royal Highness reviewed the results of the recent incident which occurred in Hammett Town Intermediate Girls' School, which has been presented by Deputy Prime Minister, Chairman of the Commission of Inquiry, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. He noted that the committee reviewed the reports of the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Health and reviewed the results of the public prosecution investigation, which stated that the incident was an individual act 
and there was no drug abuse network to promote it at the school. In the light of those reports, the High Level Committee made sure the committee also confirmed the validity of the administrative and legal procedures taken by the Student Disciplinary Committee of the Ministry of Education on the incident. The two students will be allowed to take part in the exams for the end of the second semester, scheduled for next month, and the regularity of the next academic year. The committee recommended the strengthening of school environment protection through the development of student behaviour relations and the involvement of parents, the strengthening of the role of the social, academic and psychological guidance in schools, the development of administrative inspection procedures and reporting procedures in schools. The Cabinet approved 12 memoranda of understanding, an executive programme and an agreement between Bahrain and a number of brotherly and friendly countries. The Cabinet approved seven memoranda of understanding, a cooperation agreement and an executive programme with Kuwait in media, agriculture, marine life, sports, culture, environment protection, ports and marine navigation. It also approved five memoranda of understanding with France in media, education, renewable energy and export development. The Cabinet approved increasing the number of countries whose citizens can obtain e-visa or a visa in the Kingdom's ports of entry. The Cabinet also approved providing Indian citizens an entry visa in the Kingdom's ports of entry if the applicant has a valid visa for Saudi Arabia, UAE, UK or the European Union and has a lawful permanent resident card from the United States. The Cabinet expressed satisfaction with the 2018 economic indicators which reflect the success of the government's economic programmes in diversifying imports, especially non-oil ones. The Cabinet also approved excluding a Danish Arla Foods Company from the condition of having a Bahraini partner to import and sell food and drinks in order to allow the company to practice the commercial activities of Mondelez Bahrain. Bahrain's joining the King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz International Centre for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue was also discussed. The Cabinet was briefed in the report of the Minister of Finance and National Economy on the spring results of the International Bank Group and International Monetary Fund. The Cabinet was also briefed on the results of the second session meetings of the Bahraini Russian Committee for Commercial, Economic, Scientific and Technological Cooperation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Debia Palace the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia bin Abdullah Sinal, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Asale. During the meeting, His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness to broaden its cooperation and coordination with the legislative authority that is based in partnership concerning national action. His Royal Highness hailed the role of the Council members in adopting causes that serve citizens and defending the homeland, as well as highlighting its political and democratic achievements in international forums. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister noted that monitoring role carried out by the Legislative Authority and its importance in supporting the efforts towards achieving the best for the country and its citizens, affirming in this regard the support of the efforts of the Government Parliamentary Cooperation and Coordination during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness reviewed with the guests a number of topics related to cooperation between the two authorities and the responsibilities concerned with the development and support of its initiatives, mainly security and stability. The Speaker of the Representatives Council extended her sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keen interest to boost cooperation and coordination with the Council, as well as his constant directives to the Ministers to be cooperative. The Speaker underscored that His Royal Highness is an example in selfless giving for his country. The Chairman of the Shura Council expressed pride in the constant support of His Royal Highness the Premier to the Shura Council and the fruitful cooperation that has resulted from such support. Al Saleh affirmed that His Royal Highness laid down the cornerstones of cooperation between the two authorities, which are giving positive results today, evident by the harmony of this relationship, citing it as a model of integral relationship between the executive and legislative authorities. The Deputy Prime Minister and Head of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the members of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects visited a number of old Maharak locations on the Pearl Road at the invitation of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities President, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. 
He noted that the government's investment in the culture and tourism infrastructure of Maharak has re-established its historical position, which has long been recognised as a strategic and multi-dimensional depth for Bahrain. He affirmed the planned investments in the infrastructure of Maharak turned the Pearl Road project into reality and is expected to be completed by next year and is expected to highlight the pearl trading profession. The project, His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's interest and the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He praised the efforts of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities to highlight the Bahraini identity through its various projects, which adds to the vision of the government aiming to make it a tourist destination. He also praised the initiatives of the private sector, which reflects his belief in the importance of protecting the original heritage of Bahrain. The Deputy Prime Minister noted that the committee prioritises this project and is sparing no effort to overcome all the challenges facing the project and to continue working on the coordination between the BIC and other service providers in order to ensure that the project is completed on time. For her part, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation for the Deputy Prime Minister and the members of the committee for the keenness on supporting the cultural infrastructure of Maharak. She noted Bahrain's attractive cultural heritage, which makes it a cultural tourist attraction. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Zanal, he at the order of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to reinstate the citizenship of 551 convicts whose nationality had been revoked as per court rulings in accordance with the provisions of Article 24 of Law 58 of 2006 with respect to the protection of the community against terrorist acts, stipulating that rulings related to citizenship withdrawal will not be effective unless they are approved by His Majesty the King. She said the Royal Order underscores the keenness of His Majesty the King to grant Bahrainis the opportunity to reconsider and get back on the right track. She added that the Order boosts the pillars of the state of law and institutions in Bahrain as well as its civilizational and humanitarian vision in protecting the nation's security and stability. She noted that the re legal and human rights system in Bahrain is developing greatly, pointing out the state's keenness on enforcing the law. In no less important is the keenness in providing care for Bahrainis and rehabilitating those who did harm to their homeland and themselves. 
She stressed that the Royal Order is a national lesson worthy of every respect to boost the spirit of patriotism, respect and law and the allegiance to the nation, leadership and people. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, commended His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's order to reinstate the citizenship of 551 convicts whose nationality had been revoked as per court rulings in accordance with the provisions of Article 24 of Law 58 of 2006 with respect to the protection of the community against terrorist acts. Al Saleh stressed that this approach is not strange to His Majesty the King, who is the first protector of the principles included in the Constitution that contribute towards the consolidation of right and justice that preserves the security and stability of society. He also asserted that His Majesty's Royal Directives for the concerned authorities to assess the status of those sentenced to drop nationality reflects Bahrain as a pioneering country in the field of human rights. He added that the Kingdom places national security above all considerations without complacency as a human right is a secure for a stable life. Al-Saleh also noted that the Bahraini nationality is an honour to its holder and those who have it should be worth it through the adoption of practices that take into account peace, national security and the preservation of the unity of society and the stability of the country. The Jafari Endowment Council has welcomed the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa regarding alternative punishments and the reinstatement of the citizenship of 551 convicts. The Council stated that the directives would significantly contribute to the reunification of families and to the rearrangement of the status of the convicted individuals with their families. The statement added that such noble directives prove His Majesty the King is keen on the interest and the well-being of the people. The Council noted that His Majesty's royal directives also widened horizons for Bahrain's prosperous present and bright future under His Majesty's leadership. The Chairman of the Council, Sheikh Mohsen al Asfar, expressed deep gratitude to His Majesty the King for his decision and paid tribute to his vision and leadership. He said that the Council value His Majesty's determination for more reforms, stressing that such noble directives are part of His Majesty's plans towards further glory and prosperity for the people of Bahrain, as reform process has included everyone, offered wider prospects for more freedoms and given religious practices greater opportunities. Alasfa said that the directives would remain a bright chapter in Bahrain's history. The National Institution for Human Rights hailed the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa regarding the reinstatement of the citizenship of 551 convicts. The Royal Order is a reflection of the wisdom and vision of His Majesty the King as he is the main supporter of the citizens and the rights of the Kingdom and its people. The Royal Order enhanced His Majesty the King's principles of tolerance and coexistence and that are best for the interest of all members of society. The NIHR affirms that it is working at implementing all the Royal Directives to promote and protect human rights in the Kingdom's commitment to all international conventions and laws which are an essential part of Bahrain's culture and its noble values of coexistence, fraternity and pluralism. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Grand Imam of Al Hazar, where he conveyed to the Grand Imam the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also extended the wishes of abundant health and happiness to the Grand Imam, and of progress and prosperity to Egypt and its brotherly people. The Grand Imam of al Assar expressed a sincere appreciation to His Majesty the King for his constant efforts to spread coexistence and tolerance among nations and cultures, as well as for establishing worldwide peace. He also stated that Bahrain has always been a distinctive example, a model in coexistence, openness and respect for others. The Minister of Foreign Affairs commended the efforts exerted by Dr Ahmed al Tayyab in promoting the rule of al Assar al-Sharif at educational and intellectual levels as a centre for Islam and enlightened thought. He also reflected the Kingdom's appreciation for all the efforts of al Assa al-Sharif to represent Islam in its right image, promote moderation and the values of Islam, counter extremism and meet the challenges facing Islamic countries. He also noted the noble stances of the Grand Imam of al Hazar al-Sharif in supporting Bahrain, wishing him further success.
the leader of Sudan's traditional military council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Abdel Rahman, received today the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. He expressed appreciation for the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, asserting that His Majesty is always keen on supporting Arab countries. The Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the leader of Sudan's traditional military council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Barham Abdel Rahman and His Majesty's keenness on supporting Sudan and its people. He also conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, wishing him success. The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed Bahrain's pride in the brotherly relations with Sudan and its keenness on promoting these relations in various fields, affirming Bahrain's support for Sudan and its unity, wishing Sudan prosperity and development. He praised the role of Sudan within the Arab Alliance to support legitimacy in Yemen under the leadership of Saudi Arabia for the establishment of security and peace throughout Yemen, noting the courage of the Sudanese army and the performance of all the tasks with which they were entrusted with efficiency. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa participated in the extraordinary session of the Council of the Arab League at the ministerial level. The meeting was held in Cairo in the presence of President Mahmoud Abbas, who briefed the Council on the latest developments regarding the Palestinian issue and the Israeli violations of the United Nations resolutions on settlements and secret places in Jerusalem. The Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to President Mahmoud Abbas, affirming the directions of His Majesty on supporting the alienable rights of the Palestinian people. The Minister also hailed the commitment of the Palestinian leadership and people to achieve peace based on the Arab Peace Initiative 2002 and the relevant legitimacy resolutions. He reiterated the Kingdom's solidarity with the Palestinian people. A concluding statement was issued stressing that the Arab countries will not accept any plan or agreement that does not go in line with the said principles. It also stated that in order to achieve lasting and comprehensive peace in the Middle East, the Palestinian rights must be restored, as well as establishing the independent sovereign state on the borders of the 4th of June 1967, with East Jerusalem as the capital, and the return and compensation of refugees, in line with Resolution 194 and the Arab Peace Initiative and the release of prisoners. In this regard, the Council affirmed the support of the police plan submitted by President Mahmoud Abbas before the Security Council in 2018. The statement also asserted the commitment of Arab states to take all necessary measures to protect the occupied East Jerusalem and preserving its Arab identity and sacred Islamic and Christian sites. The statement called upon the international community to implement the Security Council Resolution 2334 against the Israeli occupying settlement protect the Palestinian civilians according to the General Assembly Resolution 10 and 20 of 2018. The statement warned of the danger of Israeli approach that adopts its racist laws to legitimise the settlement system, including the law that allowed Israeli government to steal the allowances of Palestinian martyrs and prisoners from Palestinian tax revenues. The statement affirmed the commitment of the Arab states to support the budget of Palestine and implement the decision of the summit of Tunisia to activate a financial safety net of 100 million US dollars a month to support Palestine to meet its political and financial pressures. The statement stressed the respect of Arab countries for the legitimacy of the Palestine Liberation Organization as the sole and legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, led by President Mahmoud Abbas. The statement also charged the Arab Peace Initiative Committee to follow up on the developments of the issue. In light of the terrorist bombings that took place in Sri Lanka while celebrating Easter Sunday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain advises all Bahraini citizens currently in Sri Lanka to exercise caution and follow the instructions of local authorities. For assistance, citizens can contact the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in New Delhi on 00 917 3030 61130 or the follow-up office on 00 973 
Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Abramehi stressed that in the light of the reproachment created by the Great Revolution in the technological and communication sectors, the challenges and responsibility are the same for everyone, and therefore collective efforts are required to safeguard the security of our countries and strengthen their national identities. The Minister was speaking during the main session of the Arab Media Forum, held under the patronage of the Kuwaiti Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Jabba al Mubarak al Hamad al Jutsaba in the presence of the Arab Information Ministers and with the participation of Arab media persons, senior officers from the Arab media, press institutions, writers, intellectuals, academics and experts. Armehi pointed out that the organisation of the information and the communication sector has always been a major concern for the workers in this vital sector, adding that the chaos witnessed by the world due to the development of social media networks has made journalists and media persons at the forefront of those demanding the enactment of laws and legislation to regulate the media sector and maintain its positive atmosphere and key role. The Minister called for early education on the best use of social media networks, being a double-edged weapon to achieve positive results. The National Bureau for Revenue, the NBR, held an interactive fact workshop for professionals working in the retail and wholesale sectors, during which the NBR recapped general and sector-specific VAT concepts, including invoicing and filing. Following a question and answer session, 48 representatives from 36 vendors were given the opportunity to visit the unique interactive demo centre that provides innovative learning experiences to ensure effective implementation of VAT. Today's workshop is a continuation of a series of workshops organised by the NBR to provide an inclusive platform for all stakeholders from the public and private sectors to ensure the smooth registration of companies with the annual supply of Bahraini dinars 500,000 to 5 million by June. Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, represented by the committee's unit, the Board R Relations Department and the Coordination Group, organises the first committee's annual conference, Create Change, on the course of two days. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. With the aim of creating a roadmap for a modern business community that meets the current economic developments and ambitious expectations, Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry organizes an annual conference discussing the most important topics and issues related to each sector. The conference emphasizes on developing the economic sectors and tackling the various issues at all levels in coordination with the relevant authorities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. On the course of two days, sectorial business committees conduct fruitful discussions with entrepreneurs and business owners related to the sector to listen to their views and recommendations which will be considered in future decisions. The platform of communication with our members in the, in, 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 uh, of the Chamber of Commerce or the business community as a whole, to hear from them and they hear from us, and also to evaluate the performance of the committees, subcommittees on their specialization in different sectors and also uh, cover different specialized aspects of, their, uh, of that sector. And from there we formulate uh, recommendations that goes up to the chamber, to the board of directors and we form it as issues that we could uh, take it up to the decision makers, legislators to create uh, changes if there are any problems that can that affects growth in economy or, or performance and efficiencies of uh, business uh, sector's performances. Of uh, finance, uh, insurance and, um, and taxation, we have um, the objective that is of uh, threefold. Number one, the enhancement of the banking and the insurance sector, supporting the uh, companies and their financial needs, and thirdly, the um, awareness of the VAT for all of the economic uh, sectors. Now we do have a number of priorities. One of the priorities that we have discussed today was uh, related to the credit rating. Countries transport and logistic uh, uh, contributes big time uh, to the growth uh, domestic product of uh, countries economy. Uh, now uh, through Bahrain uh, Chamber of Commerce and Bahrain Economic Development Board we are working together uh, to achieve Bahrain uh, 2030 vision 
when it comes to uh, transport and logistics uh, uh, contribution uh, to the economy. The first day featured finance, insurance and tax committee, technology committee, health committee, industry and energy committee, transportation and logistics committee. Wonderful meeting and the discussion with all private sectors, uh, owners, stakeholders, uh, and this is not the first one. We had a majlis before in Chamber of Commerce. We had a lot of visits to the stakeholders. We have a lot of visits taking the stakeholders point to the government. But today we put four point f f in discussion which came from the private sector itself. Number one, the quality of health care to bring the tourism to Bahrain. We focused on three challenges. The first challenge is to create quality jobs uh, with the good value addition. And to secure that, we need to secure the raw material for the feedstock to the, uh, from the primary industry to the downstream industry. The prices has to be competitive and sustainable and for long tenor enough for us to attract investment. The second is that we have to integrate our industries with the massive industry that's coming to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia because it's an extension market. We have to have presence, cross presence by Saudi investors in Bahrain and Bahraini investors in Saudi Arabia or manufacturing in Bahrain to feed into the Saudi market. Inform them about the activities of the technology committee and what has the technology achieved over the past six months uh, of various events and various uh, reports that we have uh, compiled. Uh, and uh, then we went into the main topic of discussion today, which was the, uh, the e-commerce platform, especially the international e-commerce platform, those that operate from uh, uh, international sites across the border into Bahrain. The second day features Real Estate and Construction Committee, Commercial Markets Committee, Food Wealth Committee, Education Committee and Hospitality and Tourism Committee. Each committee features top business leaders and experts in every sector presenting unique working papers to integrate business owners in enhancing future economy and creating a unified vision. For the first time, Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry launches an annual committees conference to allow business community leaders from every sector to share their views, communicate and take part in decision making. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.